Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. I'm Brink. And this is Belle. And we're going to be talking about random stuff today and playing a little bit of Hearthstone. In other words, basically our life. <laughs> we do have random discussions quite an awful lot. Oh man. So how long has it been since you've played Hearthstone before the last couple of games that you did? To warm up. Well, I just did one game to warm up and I lost horribly. Um, I don't know, a couple of months since I played regularly. Basically since I started school. <laughs> I don't do anything else when I'm in school. Well, it is kind of a time consuming thing because what, you've got nine post grad credit hours and then working forty hours a week on top of that, so Right. Yeah, time is an issue. Always an issue. Where did you get your card back? I don't even remember. I'm using right. I can't see my own card back. Is no. it? Is it the ninja? Yeah, I think it's the ninja. Because oh, it's like okay. black and silver and red. Oh, yeah, what, I can see it on your What does mine look like? I, I'm seeing it on your side. Really? I must yeah. have ninja too. We think alike. Well, I think it's actually a reward from one of the one of the seasons, if I'm not totally mistaken. But I do um. not remember. It's been a while. So anyway. Random topics. Yes. Highways for animals. Actually a brilliant idea. I saw an article on that. Have you seen the pictures that. about those? I did. I saw a picture of one. Okay, so here's what happened. I saw a picture of this on the internet somewhere. Probably like Pinterest or Tumblr or BuzzFeed or something. And I was like, oh, surely that's not real. I bet that's a fake picture. But... I drive, I commute for um, my classes, so I drive like, I don't know, it's like probably 40 miles to my university? Yeah, 30. 30, 40, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> so I drive this highway three times a week, back and forth, and it's really pretty awful. <laughs> um, kind of passing through the woods a little bit. Yeah, and there's roadkill all the time i have seen bears on that road i really? have seen yes i have not i have seen before i it had to have been a semi because the thing was plastered this is a terrible <laughs> topic of discussion no, but i it's saw not. like a 300 pound black bear on the side of the road that okay, had gotten taken so out thursday when i was driving to school i counted six pieces of roadkill um and three of them were full-size deer Three deer that had been killed on this highway that week. And so I, it's a depressing drive because I, I deal, I do this drive three times a week and every time it's like roadkill, roadkill, roadkill. And the other day I actually killed a squirrel, a squirrel on my way. A baby squirrel. Um, a baby you horrible squirrel. horrible person. And I, because I was trying to change lanes, so I was looking up at the traffic around me, and I looked down, and there was a baby squirrel that I'm pretty sure had already been run over once because it looked like it was stuck and it was, like, trying to get up and move, but it couldn't, and I ran over it. Anyway, so we need animal highways going over all of our roads so that I don't have to deal with looking at roadkill on my drive. Totally impeccable logic. Screw the safety of the actual animals. You well, just want to not have to look at corpses. There is also safety for the actual animals. I just, you know. <laughs> these, these highways are, or the overpasses on highways are actually pretty impressive. Because from the picture that I saw, they plant them. So it's like a stretch of forest going over a highway. You might as well tunnel the highway into the dirt for the care that they take to preserve nature across this bridge. It's actually pretty cool. Trees and grass and... All manner of lovely things that would attract creatures and apparently they do work really really well because the areas that they've been put in um, the amount of traffic accidents caused by animals has gone way 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 down so and it's apparently an effective tool that is the other thing it's a safety thing I actually almost hit a deer when I was coming back the other night I didn't because there was a car in front of me and excellent they saw uh, it. Um, excellent proactive driving um, yeah, so I didn't, but it, I like I drive a little tiny car. If I hit a full like a full size deer going sixty miles down the road, I I would be dead probably. <laughs> I alarm robots make me nervous. Oh, don't say you're gonna kill my alarm. Because robot. because uh, there could be big things in you your hands. You are such a killjoy. I I am. I pride myself in my killjoy. Such a killjoy. 
<laughs> I forgot how difficult warlock cards are because they are always so they're so negative yeah, for any positives that you could yeah, possibly get it's very dangerous Ugh. so I'm gonna go for the safe route I think evil magic takes its toll you know that it does <laughs> yeah I should. I watched Once Upon a Time. You would be able to learn these things. Also, let's talk about TV shows that have too much drama. Can we talk about this? Oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> so, I watched Once Upon a Time. Except that I basically quit watching this season. I watched, like, two of this season's episodes. And I really like the idea behind Once Upon a Time because I'm obsessed with... Fan like fantasy and fairy tales and mythology and legends and the way that we twist them and rework them for each generation and I think it's a brilliant idea but oh my word they keep making things so convoluted and th <laughs> this is when I finally gave up with this season and I don't think it's a major spoiler because it was like in the second episode but they um <clears throat> they came back okay so emma's the dark one now and then they did this thing where everyone is in one of the foreign lands and then they come back and nobody remembers anything but they did that like two seasons ago that exact same thing where they were in the fairy tale world and then they came back and no one could remember anything and recycled like, plot guys, lines you've you already think were, done this you think they were running out of things to do <laughs> so the other super dramatic show that I'm watching is Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which doesn't annoy me as much because they're only on the second season, or third season? Second season? Third season? I, I'm not actually sure. I haven't started watching that one I yet. forget. But anyway, it's only a few seasons in, so... Third season, I think. I think you're right. I think it is the third season. So it's not quite as bad with the whole so. drama bit, but... It's still a little, like, no one can be happier for more than 10 seconds type show, and... That's kind of, like, the running theme, though. The more TV you watch, the less satisfying TV is. Because, just, across the board, it's drama. Whether it's sex drama, or relationship drama, or violence drama, or whatever it might be. Um, it's just non-stop drama. Yes, yes. Which is why... Like, even the sci-fi shows. I was trying to watch... There's a show called Defiance, which, you know what? I'm going to go right out and say it. I am a sucker for B movies and B TV shows. I like a lot of the stuff that the Sci-Fi Channel puts out, even though it is legitimately crap, and Wait, I can't really? even argue I don't think we've that. talked about this before. Yeah, it's not something I advertise super highly. But anyway. You maybe should have warned me before we got married. <laughs> I'm not sure if we can put up a bad sci-fi. There's this show called Defiance, which actually is a decent TV show until the second season. And it goes into that whole thing where there's... The, I, I can do this without any spoilers. There, There's a crime family. It's this husband and wife that are both such terrible, evil, despicable people that I can't even... I, I, I don't even know how to put into words exactly how nasty these two people are. But somehow they never get eliminated. Like, all these other characters die. And these two, they split up. They come back together. They split up. One of them thinks the other one's dead. They poison other people. All of this crap. Aww. This murder and mayhem following them in their path through this town. And it's like... They're kept around in the show strictly for the purpose of creating contention. There is no reason that they should be alive or anything. I, it, it, it's just there as, as a mechanic for the show. And for the first season, it kind of made sense that the second season is just like, all you're doing is generating drama and this is painful. But I think you're right about familiarity <laughs> being part of the problem because the same thing has happened with fiction where I it's excessively harder to yay you didn't hit me um it's successively harder to find something that i'm really interested in but that's because i've watched so many or i've read so many things and yeah. with tv too like i've watched so many shows that it's harder and harder to you know find this something is, that i'm interested in this is one of the reasons in. that i like anime 
is because when you go into anime cartoons, yes, there are tropes that follow you around no matter where you go, but you can pretty much just say, you know what? I don't even care about reality anymore. Let's just draw up our own fantasy world where anything can yeah. happen. And it's like, it, it is actually a halfway decent source of new material because everything else is so worn out by now. You know, it, anyway. I'll agree with you. Why did I do that? Because you were talking and you can't focus when you're talking. This, this is true. great. This is true. It means, guys, this is a story for you. It means that he gets us lost all the time. Well, not all the time. But when he drives, like, long trips to visit my parents or visit his parents, he almost always misses exits. Yeah. Because he's talking to me. I think it's your fault. Because, no, it's not my because, fault. Because it's not my fault that you can't conversation focus. Partner. <laughs> Not my fault that you can't focus. <laughs> Everyone knows guys can't multitask. I'm going to do... I'm going to make a spectacularly bad play because I think you're going to beat me and see if it works. It sort of works. Well, you got rid of one of them. <laughs> oh. 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 Well, you can uh, you can life tap. I can life tap draw and a get a pirate. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations! I think you beat me. But you've also played more recently, so yeah, you know I'm well, gonna say that, that that's not that that has anything to do with tavern Shh. brawl. <laughs> Shush. Anyway, it's your time. It's your turn for a random topic. Okay. My, I, I don't know. Sometimes I am a little bit fascinated by things that come out where it, it's kind of cause and effect or correlations between things where you might not necessarily be able to decisively prove that one thing leads to another, but it's interesting coincidental stuff and things like that. Anyway, I was reading this article the other day on uh, speech patterns and psychological tendencies Psychopathic tendencies. Sorry. Getting We're not going to talk about why you're interested in psychopaths. Physi physiological and psychopathic and sociopathic and psychological. All those psi words that get confused with each other. Um, yeah. Let's... Uh, are, are you ready? Are, are you going to join me in this brawl? I haven't gotten the request from you yet. It says I'm waiting for you. Did you leave? No, I'm still on the top of Brawl screen. Oh, select a character and hit Brawl friend. Okay. Anyway, there is a, there is apparently a correlation between the uses of the words so, because, and inserting the phrase um or uh into your speech and psychopathic tendencies. Um, there's a couple of different theories behind this, um, as far as the, uh, and um goes, which I just said, um, in a, in, in a sentence, basically, if you have psychopathic tendencies, your brain does not function normally. And from a very young age, your brain basically learns to translate for itself so that normal people can understand. So people with psychopathic tendencies say, uh, and um, more because they're pausing their speech in order to phrase their thoughts in a way that normal brains can understand and then say it that way so that there's less confusion just out of habit. Which I, I find interesting on a certain level, but then also I have my doubts about that because you can also have just a super ditzy person that's not able to speak very well, and they will say, uh, oh, no, I'm all over the place. Or maybe there's just a lot of psychopaths hiding among us. I'm not sure. So I think what the differentiator between this is that it's a totally different thing to say that you can, that this is a trend among psychopaths. So when you go back and look at the speech patterns of a known psychopath, this is one of their trends. And using that speech pattern as a way to identify a psychopath, I think is the difference. Because you can't, like, using because and so, which you mentioned, is just a, 
an example of having a particularly logical based thinking pattern. Um, but so, that is also a psychopathic tendency, though. But it doesn't mean that you can identify a psychopath because yeah. of that. You're not attaching emotion to your actions or logic. Therefore, you would use the phrase so or because more because you have a logical reason for everything that's it's happening. And you're detached emotionally. But you're right. That's kind of way too broad of a statement. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that it's something so. you can just, like, oh, you must be a psychopath because you use so and because. Yeah. That would, that would make... I think it would make the majority of people psychopaths. It would make a lot of people psychopaths. Communication is weird because, I mean... You're going to have everybody stopping for an un and um somewhere, and that's kind of one of the reasons that I think a lot of people today are more comfortable writing instead of speaking is because you have more time to think things out and you're separated from the other person. You don't have to deal with emotional interjections and all that kind of stuff. And I don't know. But also we spend so much more time communicating by writing because of the internet now. Like before, you either had to write people a letter, an actual letter, or you dealt with everyone else pretty much face to face. I mean, and phones changed some of that, but but the internet has changed a lot more of it, I think. Yeah. Well, that's, I don't know, it kind of brings up another topic of conversation because it it's, people tend to develop a different writing voice than they have a speaking voice. That was mean. Come on. I would say that I'm sorry, <laughs> but, but... you're not. <laughs> no, I'm not. Heartless person, you. Yep. You know it. Anyway. Oh, so writing voice versus speaking voice. I was paying too much attention to beating you. Okay, so I read an article about this the well, other day. Thanks. Where this guy was basically <laughs> saying that you should write like you talk. And his idea there was that you read this writing that is super convoluted or uses this vocabulary that just no one else uses. And he's like, what's, you know, what's going on here? You shouldn't write like that. It's hard to, wait, why? I'm sorry, I just chose the wrong card and I'm not sure what my mouse was doing. <gasps> anyway. Do, do, you mean, um, do, do you mean that when you're talking, you can't do other things? No, I can do other things. I just, I think my mouse had a spasm or something. Anyway, so this guy's point was that you should write like you talk. Which, in theory, is a really great idea. But he needed in his essay to go a bit further into it because what he really meant was write with your normal vocabulary and don't try to make things complicated. But that's not the same as writing the way you talk. If you actually transcribed a conversation or you wrote the way you speak, it would be incredibly frustrating to read. Um, because we... You're going to be very angry at me. I am going to be angry at you. <laughs> but we don't... You know, good speaking doesn't necessarily make good reading. No, it doesn't. Because if you had uh and um interjected every 17 words... It would be super <laughs> annoying. It would sound like a middle school speech project. <laughs> yeah. So I think in the sense that he meant don't make your writing too convoluted... Dang it! Yes, it's a brilliant idea. In the sense of write exactly like you talk, it's a horrible idea. I am not... I am not impressed. I am not enthused. Not really. That is that is a <laughs> brutal hand you got going on there, babe. See, I can talk and think at the same time. <clears throat> well, you know what? You know what? We're just going to have to remedy this. Oh. Well, good luck. Good grief. Where did you get that thing? From my toy box of horrors. I wasn't able to do it exactly like I wanted to, but that worked out as well as it could have, I think. Okay. It's only going to leave me with four health, though. 
I, I think I've lost this. So, um, <laughs> you were gonna hate me so very much. Did you get a booster card for your Wind Fury? No, oh, I'm trying to think about which one I'm actually gonna use. But don't think too hard. Um, okay. We can use the Wind Fury. <laughs> and then we're gonna play this little guy. And then we're gonna play. Also, can we talk about how wrong the drawing of the pirate is? I mean, we don't really have to talk about it because we know that generally video games get depictions of women wrong, but. I couldn't do any decent pirating in that lovely um, revealing outfit. Not really, not really uh, anatomically correct. No. By a long shot. Well, I mean, and the same goes for your mage. What is it about women that they just can't get us anatomically correct? I, I don't How know. How hard is that? I really do not know. It's not like we're half the population or anything. All you have to do, well, a little over half. All you have to do is <laughs> is go look at like Mortal Kombat or something, and you're like, not only is that physically impossible, if you did attempt that, it would be so brutally painful that I'm not sure you could exactly. cope with fighting anymore. <laughs> I think that topic has been beaten to a point. I know, but... it has. So I'm not too worried about it. I was just... Like in a lot of the MMORPGs or RPGs, you know, you get the really high level female armor. And it's like the higher level the armor is, the less it actually covers, and yet somehow it provides more protection. So, is it like, are the cups on this bra magnetic? Boom. So they attract arrowheads and sword blades, and that's how they protect things? Like, you swing for the midriff. But also... You swing for the midriff, and the sword just goes right to the cups. And well, let's talk about... <laughs> Let's not talk about how incredibly painful that would be. One more or are you done? We can play again. That's okay. fine. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm sorry. Now I've got this mental picture and it's not going away. It's okay. Someone can, someone shoots a bow. We can just make magnetic um, groin armor. I, and, I was about to go fair. there. So I'm like, someone attempts to give you an arrow to the knee, and instead it gets sucked <laughs> up to your cup. <laughs> this is great. I think we have uncovered an entire new genre of <laughs> gaming-related art. Oh my goodness. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get off of that one. <laughs> Move on to something else. Like mythical beasts. Actual mythical beasts, not Rat and Link mythical beasts. I was but, reading about dragons but, but, last but, night. But, Stop, but, hush. You there's no such thing as an actual mythical beast because if it is a mythical beast, it is not an actual thing. But there can be actual conceptions of mythical beasts <clears throat> as opposed to Red and Link's mythical beasts, which are actually just fans. Okay. I I will tentatively accept that. Good. I'm glad. Um, actual mythical beasts like dragons and griffins and centaurs and fawns and things. I was reading about dragons last night. So my favorite thing about mythical beasts, much like myths and legends and fairy tales, is that they can take any form that you want them to take. Like... There are a few generally accepted things, like dragons can fly and are scaly and can breathe fire, and centaurs are half human and half horse, but other than that, you can put, like, you can do just about anything you want with it. And that, I, I love the way they can be reinvented. So my question is, what is your favorite mythical beast, you and all of the viewers? Um... That, that's a hard one. That is really a hard one because there are so many to pick from. I have always thought, is it the Hydra in Greek mythology? The, the dragon looking thing where when you cut off one head, two more grow from it? Yes. That one has always intrigued me. Like as far as apocalyptic creatures that will bring about the end of mankind, like that is the kind of thing that pops into my head. And I don't know. I guess I'm just a sucker for massive death and destruction. I was about but... to say, not a lot 
biological beasts don't <clears throat> have to be end of humanity as we know it. Eh, but it's more fun that way. Uh, only if you like dying. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, everybody loves a little death and destruction now and again. Hmm. It's a as fact long of life. As it's not me dying. Yeah, maybe. What is your favorite since you've brought up this topic? Well, that's a good question. Um, I like dragons. They're pretty cool. I like how to train your dragons. Dragons. I mean, any dragons are pretty cool. Because they have all of the different types, right. and some of them are kind of hilarious. Dragons are cool, but then I'm also a sucker <clears throat> for... Because there are a lot of mythical beasts that don't get written about a lot, so dragons are overdone. Everybody writes about dragons. Pegasus or Pegasi are starting to become more of a thing. That's a cool idea to me. Um, so you have Pegasus by Robin McKinley. You have... Um, the Pegasi in Rick Riordan's um, Greek myths. I have to admit, the one that I don't see a lot really dealt with in fiction is um, the griffin, which is the half eagle, half lion, I think, normally. Yes. I really think it would be cool to see someone deal with griffins. Um, just because I don't see fiction about them. Um, so that's probably my current favorites to be written about. Well, you know what? Never mind. I'm not even going to go down that road. <laughs> no, what were you going to say? I was about to say, is this, is this completely disregarding the fact that, uh, Griffins are kind of a physical impossibility, but then again, dragons kind Mythical of are too. Mythical beasts! But... That's the point. Well, the wingspan would have to be so huge on griffins to actually support the weight, because if you're taking the uh, portions of a lion, that would not be hollow-boned and would have much more muscle mass than a bird could have. And I'm probably really severely overthinking this. You are probably, definitely overthinking You're probably it. over there shaking your head and contemplating banging it against the desk. You are way overthinking this. Okay, I will. I will simply shut up now. I'm about to unleash the nightmares. On me? On the map. Yeah, so on me. Nah. Maybe. On the map is on me. Okay. Well then. I'll grant you that. Reporting for duty. <clears throat> Have to think about By it. nightmare, I mean lots and lots and lots of spiders. Oh. <clears throat> so not like that you're gonna kill me or not at this particular moment in time. It is a, there's a spider on my blanket in the living room. So I left it there so you can kill it later. Oh, fun. You're welcome. What? Um, Let's do that one. Okay, we're going to do this. Wee! Oh, it's only three. Bonk. Yeah, but that means I get a bunch of beasts in my hand. Oh, that's true. It's the beast spiders. Yup. Huh. Alright, I think I'm just gonna leave it right there. And we're just gonna go face. Why did you kill my my recruit? Because I can't leave him alive. Ugh. Can't leave any cards alive if I can help it. On a happy note, the rain has finally left. Yes! The eastern portion of the United States. We have had, I think, I, I was talking to someone in the UK, <clears throat> and it's like we've been swapping weather recently. Because yeah. it was gloomy and rainy and torrential storms and just nasty, ugly, coldish weather for like a month straight. Not cold-ish. And at that point cold. in the UK, it was bright and sunshiny. Woo! Which never happens. And then you turn back around, and now we're sunny. Oh. 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 We're sunny again, and they got all of their rain back. So it's... <laughs> and snow, apparently. I saw on Twitter this morning that several people in the UK had snow. Yeah. This is going to be a fun turn. Oh. Just saying. Oh, yeah. Um... <clears throat> Not sure I approve of this turn. 
Oh, wait. Crap! Oh, well. I can kill him. I couldn't... I, I thought that the spiders would be beasts, but Look they're spectral right spiders. My hand. Dang it! <laughs> Dang it all. Anyway. Well, that, that, was, that was a small amount of fun. Small amount of fun. <laughs> Anyway, Small fun. It's just our our area is not set up to take that much rainfall because we've had water under houses and water under roadways and people washing away and people washing away. Yes, yeah, people washing away. When did we have people washing away? Uh, a couple of weeks ago, in that last round of really really bad rainfall, there was actually someone that drowned over I hear like got a problem. ten miles from here. Oh. They got uh, swept underneath something in their car. Really, really sad. But anyway, yeah. I think it's worth. Keeping. I'm glad that the rain is gone. I am so very, we very like glad. We like sunshine. We like sunshine a lot. I know that everyone hates Florida, but I would actually not mind moving to Florida. Who hates Florida? <clears throat> well. I don't know. If the internet is to be believed, everyone. But then well, again, the, the internet, internet is stupid. The internet claims to hate Nickelback, and yet Nickelback keeps selling records by the millions. The internet so. claims all kinds of weird things. Yeah. Yeah, it does. It's, it's just... No, it, that, you played a secret! That particular thing has always struck me as hilarious, because basically... If, uh, if everyone hated Nickelback as much as they say then no one would own Nickel Nickelback albums. And yet somehow, they always manage to go platinum or whatever it is. I, I've been not listening to music statistics for way too long. Anyway, they always sell a ton of records. So apparently there's a bunch of hypocrites on the internet. <gasps> you don't what? say! <laughs> what? Who are claiming to hate Nickelback, and then as soon as they get off of their computers, they're... Well, no, they're probably not even getting off their computers. As soon as they close their chat window, they're hopping over to iTunes and uh, downloading Nickelback by the boatload. Really? We can't imagine that. Really now? Really? Really? Why, why, why would you do this to me? Because I want to beat you, of course. Grr. What do I want to do here? Dang the it. Other weird thing about the internet is that you can see people on so many different mediums. So I was thinking about this the other day when I was watching YouTubers. And in real life, you generally only interact with people in one or two different um, settings. You know them from work or from school or from church or whatever it is. And on the internet, you can see people in so many different angles. Like, you can have a YouTuber, and you can watch all their videos, and then you can follow them on who knows how many social media platforms, and then you can go to their real-life meetups, and, like, it's just, there are a bizarre number of ways to interact with people I'm trying not to laugh right now. Why? Because this next turn is going to be hilarious. Oh. Okay. Thank you for making me kill one of my people. Me, oh, you, that's... No, that's the least of your worries. The absolute least of your worries. Right. Hmm. Um, you know what? Actually, I can get some damage out of this. There we go. And... Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Where did you get a death wing? <laughs> like well... we were talking about earlier, when, when people have a different voice when they write and when they do different things, I think that's part of what comes out today in social media. Because... You can have someone who does, they, they may have a certain voice or a certain character that they portray themselves as on YouTube, but then you can go over to Reddit or 
to Facebook or to Twitter and see different aspects where they might be quipping or doing things like that. And then you might also see pictures of them floating around if they have Instagram or whatever else. So you end up getting people... If you're only dealing with one medium, medium, um, people... No. Oh, good. Okay. You're one help away. Um, people can present themselves as a one-dimensional image as, as exactly what they want people to see them as. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's a little bit harder to do that when you try to spread yourself across all of these different platforms. <clears throat> you know, that's a really interesting card, and it's a shame that I'm not going to be able to make use of it. Boom! Ah, you and your stupidly overpowered dragon. <laughs> oh my goodness. Alright, well that is the end of that. Okay guys, we did a little bit of rambly randomness here. But if you have any topics that you would like us to think about, discuss, or broach, just uh, let us know. Hit up the comments, let us know if there's anything that you want to hear our opinions on. And hopefully we'll be able to get back around and do this again next week. Bell's going to be extremely quiet, so I'm just going to go ahead with the outro. We will see you guys in the next one. As always, thank you so much for watching.